Inspection progress report. Oh boy. Um, yes. So the Paul's question was um, the two accounts that have not been changed yet but have requested meetings. Um, and what was your question specifically on those two? Well, they requested a meeting. After yes. Seven meetings. Um, and no. who would be invited to that meeting? So uh, one customer sent a letter the day after the deadline, a certified letter the day after the deadline to initiate a meeting. Um, but I'm not going to play that hardball. Um, so I've tried to call. I've left two email or sent two emails. Um, at this point, I'm getting no response from them. Um, and then the second customer came into the office and with his engineer and uh, is reading a part right below our water ordinance that says that the one ER is based off of a 250-gallon per day water flow, an average water flow. Um, so he's contesting and he asked for all of his water usage and says that he is not using 250 gallons a day for water and therefore would like a reevaluation of his ER. So he has his engineer working on it. Um, and I said, okay, well, you know, he was looking for a decision from me and I said, I, I don't make decisions. I said, our engineer, our attorney, and our board makes decisions and I just do the pass through. I said, so whatever your engineer can work up to provide the board, our engineer and our attorney for consideration, I will accept it and as soon as you turn it in, I'll pass it on to the board and make it an agenda item. And um, I gave him a printout of his account history and stuff so that they could perform that work up and prepare a rebuttal and I have not heard back from them yet. So, um, no meetings have been said, um, set at this point, um, and I'm still actively trying to reach out to the one customer who's requested a meeting but has gone missing. Well, they're both prominent businesses, so they aren't missing. They're just, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I, I call, I email. But they're um, not complying, and the others are. Yeah. So, um, I did say, you know, the deadline was the 29th of August. If I do not hear back from you by next billing, we will go ahead and move forward with the proposed changes that were outlined in your original letter. Um, so, I'll try to call a couple more times, email a couple more times. So our, our existing ordinance or whatever does have a 20, 250 gallon a day? Uh, yes, so and that sentence, yeah. That sentence is right under the ER valuation. Oh, so, that. Yeah, the like table. The sheet yeah, that's the, kind table. Of the table. Yeah. It's the very uh, next sentence. That but, is not in the wording of explanation. That is as an asterisk on the bottom of the table to explain where we get the numbers yes. from. Yes. Yes. Are you talking about water? He's talking so, about water. He doesn't use his water. When the 250 refers to water or sewer? Water. So it's water? how the well, sewer ER was set up based on a 250-gallon water usage yeah. a day. Yeah, but so. what about snowbirds who leave for six months? We could all use that same reasoning, couldn't we? Yeah. So Which, there's nothing... Okay. Yeah. Do you understand? Which, Snowbird can come in here and say, I don't use mine. I want... Don't want to pay my bill. Yeah. To further the complicate that, you can't measure yeah, sewer effluent. And, and, and some this is a no, even underwater system. This is a no-brainer. Yeah, we can't even tell because they're not he is, like the Mimi Ann Schaefer system. We can't even tell how much water they're using. Well, the table is... It's a just 250 gallons of oil less. Yeah. Yeah, or the, Bob had a good point. We can say 250 gallons per day or less. <laughs> yeah, very true. Originally, it's based on the same, same thing. Yeah. All those by the number of bedrooms, there's nothing to do with bathrooms. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Or less. Yeah. The design. Simple yeah. Design. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, we certainly have a complicated So that was not so so or no less to, or no yes. greater than. To yeah. the building yeah. fairly when you have boats that you have very, very little water, yet they still produce sewage. And we, <laughs> this is a complicated water district when it comes down to it. Yeah. But you have float homes. 
should we treat those the same as a RV, same way as a permanently set RV? How about same as a house? Same as a house. They live in the year round, some yeah, of them. It's, yeah. it's very uh, complicated. So yeah. some people live on boats almost year round. Uh, yeah. But are they hooked up to our system? Yes. You know, yeah. in most cases not, but in some cases they are. So. Yeah. That's where we're at right now, but yeah, shouldn't we, we go ahead, Pat. Oh, shouldn't we determine how or who is going to participate in any in meetings with the customers that want to discuss their situation? Well, so far, so far, uh, uh, Clint and Jesse have been, uh, and Bob have been, uh, Going to the uh, yep. doing the inspections and so forth, and and they have settled most of these situations. But you're talking about the where where it comes up as a as a uh, the two kids, the two right the two that are disagreeing. The, I mean, should board to the board member or more than one board member be involved? I mean, I I don't. Know that I want to put that responsibility on Jesse and Clint. Well, no, I, I, I agree with you there, but right now Jesse has made a uh, has requested basically that they give her something, right? Yeah, I would never make and, any decisions and, on this. And, and until they, they do that, that there's then they may make a very reasonable proposal. Yeah. Um, and one has, right, they, one I has guess has my question is how, how do how do we handle that? How do we handle that? When it comes in. How I've been handling it is that I'm just going as the go-between because even if one board member did show up at the meeting, no decisions could be made. Right. Um, it would all need to be brought to the board at the same time. So I sit in on the meetings, I enforce policy and procedure, I collect any material, and then I present it to the board all at the same time for a district and board decision. Yeah, I guess that was my question. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I don't, I don't make decisions and or anything. At, I just enforce what I mean, you guys have already said. At this point, that because they have given no dates of when they want to talk to Jesse, that it's it would just be on, it, it it would be on Ted being informed and then Ted determining if he wanted one of us besides him to come in and and witness any communication. But anything that's found, yes, this, the whole open meeting laws and the sunshine and all that, we have to but then bring it back here. How I anticipate a meeting like that going is that I would sit down with them and they would just have a series of questions of, well, what did you count and how did you get there and why does this mean that? And I would just go over the ordinance and state, our ordinance says this, it's outlined here, it's on this page, and then they have their questions heard. If they say, I don't agree with this or I think this should change, that's a completely different situation and I would ask them to put that into an email or a report and then request that they be at a meeting with the board to present it and discuss it. But um, in my opinion, a meeting with them would just be me showing them what has already been decided and discussed on our ordinances and by the board and hopefully answer their questions there. It could escalate to having a meeting with a board member to try exactly. to facilitate an agreement. But, but the one who won't answer your emails, there should be a deadline Given to them, yeah, you have a date to answer, and then you need to go forward with however yes, you would. Yes, which is what I was telling everyone here. Is yeah. what I said, you have until our next billing period, which is the end of this month, so on the 30th, and then we will go ahead and move forward with what was previously discussed in your letter. Yeah, very good. First letter, so. Okay.